Hello and welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Jim Rugg. I'm Ed Piskor. We are celebrating the release of Barry Windsor Smith's Monsters, the uh, 370-page graphic novel masterpiece out now from Fanagraphics, 30 years in the making, one of the great what-if comics. Never thought I'd get to see this, Ed. So in order to celebrate this, we are looking at Barry Windsor Smith comics this week. Today we're going to look at one of his first writing jobs, Marvel Fanfare number 15, The Thing, April Fool's Story. But first, Ed, tell us about another Fanagraphics masterpiece. <laughs> Red Room issue number one is going to be coming out on the stands in a matter of weeks. We're hitting the print button uh, as we speak. Uh, thank you so much for putting in all the pre-orders. Uh, Jim, thank you for the variant cover for issue one. Peach Momoko, got to thank you for uh, the cover as well. Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit, Jimmy. The idea is that people are streaming murders uh, on the internet and getting away with it scot-free while making money at the same time. We, given that problem, each issue is going to be self-contained, looking at that problem at a different angle. And the second issue that could be pre-ordered right this very minute is going to take a look at how uh, one sort of procures the uh the victims of uh such videos man so every story self-contained if you see an issue grab an issue uh you will get a complete experience no more decompressed bullshit storytelling where a writer gets thrilled with themselves for coming up with one idea and stretching it across a half a year's worth of comic books you can join me on patreon.com where you can download my out of print hard to find zines like the notebook drawings catalog um I think I have 10 of these uh, PDFs now available when you join Patreon. You can also find lots of my original art. You can see how I make the comics that I make, including uh, right now side-by-side -side comparisons of two Street Angel stories, Street Angel's Dog and Lost Dog, uh, based on the same story, but drawn three years apart, kind of the alpha and omega of my image comics street angel volume one so if you like what we do here on cartoonist kayfabe you can get a whole lot more of that at patreon.com slash jim rug so ed today we're going to look at the thing story from marvel fanfare when i started getting in my uh you know going down my rabbit hole of barry windsor smith fandom in the early 90s this was one of the comics that i would see pop up quite a bit you know a very iconic thing story in a lot of ways i think this is one of barry windsor smith's early writing jobs. He may have done a short story here or there for Epic Illustrated, but I feel like this is uh, one of the, the first kind of prominent writing jobs that he did. And uh, starting out with kind of an interesting layout and a bit of a wordless sequence here. <laughs> do you remember, do you remember loads? Is that, is that what he's doing uh, with the, with the cigar right there? Is he stuck? Yeah. Like put it, did you ever, play with loads before no i have no idea what that is they're so great i've totally forgot about them i used to do that to my, my parents smoked when i was a kid uh so you you you, you pop them in the tip and it makes the the tip of the cigarette explode man. whenever you light it yeah <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> just a little popper wow i bet the uh, parents weren't happy with that no no but, but it's it was that thing where they had to hide their face when they laughed about it, but they were like, listen, these things cost a lot of money, man. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> totally forgot about those things. So we, we see a, a lot of uh, relatively wordless sequence here as Ben Grimm is getting up in the Baxter building, so it's kind of day in the life of. There's your classic uh, still life illustration with the drapery. Yes, a recurring motif in Barry Windsor Smith splash pages. Just showing off that he really draws, you know, like a lot of uh, cartoonists create their iconography uh, for how they communicate their ideas. And he's just showing you, listen, start with some foundation. Yeah, and you see he puts on his robe, has a kick me sign on the back of it. This is kind of a funny storyline as uh, annoyed by the alarm clock, punches it to turn it off, has a whole closet full of alarm clocks. Apparently he's not a, uh, doesn't, doesn't rise easily. Right. Going through his morning routine, heads to the bathroom, brushing his teeth. By the way, what is he brushing? Is what? What is that? It's a that's a thing sized toothbrush. Yeah, I'll say, and it kind of grows. It doesn't look that big in his hand here, but <laughs> adds up. So he's brushing his teeth, looks in the mirror, and uh, he's grown a beard, <laughs> stubble. <laughs> and we saw in the previous page, man, that uh, 
some mysterious uh, blonde person that has some affiliation with Fantastic Four was cutting straws. Yes, drinking straws. You can see them being uh, assembled here along with some glue. So that doesn't add up. Thing is no dummy and realizes uh, this is the handiwork of Torch. Play, playing a prank. Cute trick, pal. So he's walking along, sees the skates on the uh, on the stairs. He, he's saying all the stuff that that thing is supposed to say. Say so you're gonna get some revolting developments. You're gonna get some uh, blue eyes in first person. And some of these things are uh, obvious, and some aren't. So the first one is, you know, roller skates on the steps. Like I'm not gonna fall for that. But figures he'll fake him out by simulating as if he did punches the floor. You know, acts like uh, it worked. Goes downstairs and finds a stack of blueberry pancakes. Delicious, man. Takes a bite of one of those. Loves it. Yum. Sits down to eat the whole stack. Explodes in his face. <laughs> <laughs> so a little inconsistent in, uh, in Johnny's tricks, what he, what he has up his sleeve here. But this one pisses him off. He's gone too far and uh, sees, rips off his robe to go get some payback. Sees the kick me sign can't figure out like what's going on why why is this all happening all of a sudden sees torch fly by and now he's going to go go exact that payback when he runs out runs into a bunch of cars on the floor <laughs> classic this is freaking home alone man john hughes watched this uh, for inspiration for his macaulay culkin flick <laughs> yeah big in, big influence the thing would be a good uh joe pesci voice or i think man yeah it wouldn't be too bad be a good a good matchup, and uh, we see Doctor Doom here, but not real Doctor Doom. Right, thing falls through it, and it's just a uh, like a poster that's hung on the wall. Same thing with the Super Scroll, just really messing with him. And that's not even a Super Scroll; that's just a scroll. Because mm. remember, Super Scrolls have like the powers, like all the powers of the uh, Fantastic Four. So I don't see a thing hand on him. Yeah, or an you're, invisible. You're, you're right about that. And by the way, people at home watching this, don't don't blame me for messing up and calling him a super scroll. That's Ben Grimm who got it wrong. That's true. Oh, dude, you you skipped the, one of the great pieces, man. Like uh, when there was the Fantastic Four cartoon, there was no, I think, Human Torch, and they they had like a little robot buddy, uh, and that's that was the robot buddy. Uh, everybody hated the robot buddy. So, so <laughs> everybody know, except Sylvester Stallone, right. who then puts him in Rocky Four. Yeah, he he came to school. He came to my school when I grew up too. But this is all I can take. <laughs> you know, just cutting promos on little Herbie or whatever his name was. Yeah, makes sense. We've seen the thing now at this point pushed to his limit, right? Just one one problem after another. Bush Miller rule of threes. Ah, classic. Classic Barry Windsor Smith referencing Ernie Bushmiller's cartooning rules. <laughs> and he runs through that last poster, and it's almost like a, a Looney Tunes gag, right? There's nothing there. Falls into the ball pit. And big reveal, Johnny Storm playing an April Fool's on him. Look at the emotion in that Johnny Storm face. Stepford Wives, Johnny Storm. Doesn't seem too excited. You'd think he'd be uh, enjoying this a bit more. It's more like Joffrey from Game of Thrones, like he's poison Cerebus head. Oh, how about that? Oh, yeah, Miss Piggy, I see. Good ball pit. Look at the highlights. Oh, I wonder if he colors this. He, I, he definitely... I, well, I don't I know for sure, but when I see all these highlights, that's a, that's a Barry Windsor Smith stroke. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. But uh, guess what? Joke's on Johnny Storm because it's not April 1st. It's March 31st. <laughs> well, heck, forget about it then. In a tender moment where the thing reflects on that kid really loves him. Aww. Weird story. One of the weirdest pieces is is, is this the, the true finale, right? Like, yes, because it does say end or fin. <laughs> right. And he's setting up uh, all these fire hoses, basically the sprinkler system. So he's going to kick a, a cigar on. But you don't see you don't see any resolution. You just get remember Chekhov's gun. You can't introduce the loads if you don't uh, you know make use of them at the end. So there it is, right there. But I would have liked to seen the water splash at least. <laughs> I thought you were going to say you wanted to see that thing go off. Yeah, Remind yeah. Remind you of your childhood Real pranks. Groucho Marx thing. So, 
one of those early Barry Windsor Smith stories that uh, I wanted to track down, and it made me realize, like, we've shown several Marvel fanfares already, and I don't know that we're done with it yet. I, I, pull, I pulled four or five. Yeah, it's it's an interesting series for these, for a wide variety of types of stories, but kind of cool to see, you know, Barry Windsor Smith asserting his authorship yeah. in a lot of ways, like like early days of him really, uh, you know, doing his own thing. I know that uh, at some point, like when they started the series, it was about clearing inventory. Like they had, they had, you know, cupboards full of uh, art and stories and they paid for it. So might as well do something with it. Uh, That's alluded to here in the intro from Al Milgram. So did he say anything about like, was this drawn specifically for Marvel fanfare? Or was this like sitting on the shelves for a while? Because it would be odd for something like this to, to have been in the regular series. It's too relaxed. You know, it's funny because he goes through and he talks about like a previous issue and, and some notes on that. And then he says, now on to this issue. And he talks about the backup issue, but he doesn't really say anything about, you know, uh, well, big news is our lead features written, penciled, inked, and colored by Barry Windsor Smith, but doesn't doesn't say whether that's um, done specifically for Marvel fanfare or not. But I don't know where else you would put it. Yeah, yeah, totally. Like it, because it, it's it, a weird length too. It's like I don't know. I don't know that it's twenty-two pages like a regular standard comic book. Right. Anyhow, I'm going to leave the K Fabers uh, with this man. Two loads work better than one in uh, your dad's cigar. Yeah, and and you need to judge your dad's temperament as to whether or not that's a good idea. Monsters from Fantastic Graphics. <laughs> <laughs> What do you say, Jimmy? Yeah, Bobby Bailey shouldn't be putting those loads no, in his no, dad's no, 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 uh, no. cigarettes. Definitely not. <laughs> okay, favorites, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell. We'll notify you when new vids are available. Jimmy, what's out there? Patreon.com slash Jim Rug, where you can find my out-of-print, hard-to-find zines and mini-comics. You can see my process of how I make comics, lots of my original art, and uh, and much, much more. Patreon.com slash Jim Rug. Red Room issue one. Uh, the orders are in. The comic is a hit before it even hit the stands. Uh, but when it hits the stands in May, uh, get yourself a copy. It's going to be a monthly comic. Uh, issue two is available for pre-order. Issue three is available for pre-order through the Fantagraphics website in the link tree in the description below this video. You can subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video to keep up with everything we have coming up in 2021. You can find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts and merchandise at the links below this video. Jimmy, give them one last set of marching orders, man. We're going to be on our way. Read more Barry Windsor Smith comics.